Why are people using cloud applications? What's in it for me as a teacher? What's in it for me as a learner? There's lots of reasons why people want to use the cloud tools. I think one of the most um, important points is they're good creative tools. We have access to things like um, uh, PowerPoint and its equivalent in Google. We have access to word processors. We have access to spreadsheets and we have access to other tools. And those, of course, you know, students can use to be creative to their heart's content. Teachers can use them to structure content and show those. And we can use those in, you know, interesting ways in teaching and learning. So having those great creative tools is a real important part of this. And a lot of those tools are easy to use. They work on different devices. They work on notebooks. They work on Chromebooks. They work on mobile. And having those easy to use tools built in is something that we really want to flag up. And then what we want to do in its learning is make sure that accessing those tools is as easy as possible. But I think where cloud tools really start to shine is the concept of collaboration and sharing. So this is where, for instance, I can give all of my class access to a single document and they can add to it and they can work on it. Or maybe a smaller group want to access it. Maybe we have a working group, two or three you know, students working on something. They can work on it together and then you know, show that combined work. And then, of course, something we all have to be wary of, these great tools tend to come at low or even no cost. So we can have you know, access to things like Google Apps for Education at no real cost to the school other than set up and making them work. And really, we want everybody to be able to work with applications and services from the major cloud providers. And for, for the moment, that's Office and that's G Suite. More will be added, I'm sure. We can already import from uh, and grab things from um, uh, Dropbox and things like that, but the real big cloud providers tend to be um, Google and Microsoft. So let's talk about um, uh, using the cloud without needing the cloud, so without needing accounts in Microsoft and Google. Um, here we can see its learning. I'm going to use a lot of screenshots um, from its learning. So here I am inside the its learning ad page, and as you can probably see, uh, I've got adding an Excel, adding a PowerPoint, and adding a Word document. So our built-in tools are based on Microsoft technology. We can't, there is no way at the moment to sort of build in um, Google tools without having accounts in Google. That's, that's just the way they work. But what we've done working with Microsoft is we've found a way to bring their cloud tools in without needing an account. So I'm using these without having an account on Outlook or Hotmail or OneDrive. I, I simply don't have one of those, but I can still use those tools. So if I was to click on create a Word document in the background, that's going to pop up a window. And yeah, there we are. There's my Word document. And I can start editing that straight away. So I've not needed to put in account details. I don't even have an account um, uh, with Office. This is all from within its learning. And let's say I wanted to you know, you know, move this up a gear. I'm creating a document, for instance, reporting on you know, what one of my uh, you know, struggling students has done. And I know they've been trying and I know they've been working hard and I want to give them a bit of help and support. So what I can do is I can invite them in maybe to start working on this document with me. Okay. So I can go in and I can simply say, um, these are all the people in my course. I'm going to, they've all got view access, but I'm going to pick one of my students. Uh, in this particular case, I'm going to pick Carol and I'm going to give her editing access. And that means she doesn't just view it, but she can also edit it. Okay. So again, she doesn't need an account on Microsoft or anything like that. This is all built into its learning. Okay. So here I am logged in as Carol. She sees that I've added a new Word essay. I can see it. It's got a little Word icon. I know it's Word. Uh, and if Carol clicks on that, because she's been given editing permissions, she doesn't see a read-only view. She can, she can actually go in and she can start working on it. And if the teacher, if I, as Erwin, I'm in there and I'm working at the same time, I, she can see that there I am. I'm typing. She's typing. I can see what she's doing. She can see what I'm doing. And we're working on this collaboratively. And we've done this all through the existing tools that sit within its learning. Um, and, of course, we can take that to the next level. I can have my whole class working on it. I can have, for instance, maybe one half of the class working on one version, one half the class working on another version, and then we can compare them. Okay. Also, if a student submits using this system, I can go in and add some comments. And I can say, well, I really like the submission. I thought you did really well there. And the students can see those comments as well. So what we're doing here is we're leveraging the 
the sort of real power of cloud. That's great tools. That's great collaboration. That's ease of use. And we're bringing them all into its learning. This is where its learning sits and works with either G Suite or Office 365 or both. So one of the things that and one of the interesting bits of feedback we got is we have some customers where schools are deciding themselves. Are they using G Suite? Are they using Office? It's completely up to them. So you'll see some screens later on where we've assumed that you want to be able to use both, that you don't want to say I'm a big G Suite user, I'm a big Office user. And what we'll do is our, is our staff will work with customers to say, do you want all of these activated or do you just want, for instance, um, integration with Office 365 integrated? Okay. So we'll give that choice out to customers because we know some want to use all, some would just like their schools to use whatever they want and we'll turn it all on, but we will give that that control. So one of the things when we were talking to customers and working with students and working with teachers is that when we give a collaboration, when I say to a, a group of students, I want you to work together, we normally have to put a context around it. We normally have to say, you know, we are working towards, for instance, unit 5A. This is in maths. This is what I want you to try and achieve when you work together. So just having a collaboration, you know, somewhere in the course resources, we thought, well, that, that's great, that's that's useful, that's, that has some merit, but it's not hitting the education objectives. It's not really going to make this as, as, as you know, as, as good and as easy and as, as simple as we want. So one of the reasons that we introduced a task was to be able to put a context around these things. Um, so we have a new ad system coming in. It's learning um, ready for uh, back to school. Um, and when I uh, click on that, I'll be able to add quickly the most common elements, the things that I want to create, you know, uh, more frequently. We have a huge ad page. We saw it before and from that I can add, um, you know, surveys and, and questionnaires and all sorts of things. But what we want to do is, is, you know, move up the most common things so I can quickly create them. And we want the task to be, you know, something that's created, you know, very, very often and, uh, you know, with, uh, you know, quickly. So I create my task, give my task a, a title, give my task a context, some sort of context, maybe create, you know, uh, link it to learning objectives. Um, and we've got a new concept coming as well, which is saying this task or this assignment or this other piece of work is, you know, homework. And this is something we want the students to do outside the normal classroom. Of course, we're talking about extending the classroom all the time. We want to make it a bit clearer that this is a task I want to set them, maybe with a deadline of the next course that I want or the next time we meet to say this is something I want you to do. Uh, and it's something that's been asked for and asked for by a lot of our customers. We've listened, we've taken it on board, and we now have the ability to say that these things we've created are homework. And that allows us to do lots of very exciting things in terms of reporting on homework and showing what's going on and, and you know, using this in a very exciting way. And then if I go down to the more options, I'll get an option because this school, for instance, is one of the ones that is using Google. It'll say collaborate with Google Docs. If I want to, if I was an Office 365 user, it would say collaborate with Office 365. If the customer said, I want my schools to have both, it would list both. But what, what we're trying to do is, is sort of, you know, start with um, uh, Google and we'll then move on to, to Office as well. So if I hit collaborate with Google Docs, it'll open up Google. If I've not authenticated, if I've not given its learning permission to do this, it'll pop up a box saying, it's learning would like to have permission to access your files on Google. Is that OK? You'll put in your Google username and password. And then from that point on, that's remembered. We know that you've given permission and we don't need to ask that again. Um, I then pick my um, document from Google. So in this particular case, I'm working on a budget spreadsheet and I want my student to collaborate together to create, you know, a good budget, maybe for somebody within the class or something else. Uh, and when I click done, It'll then add that into the task and I can see the Google icon. And if I just zoom in a little bit, um, I can see that it's a Google document. And if I click on that, it will open it in Google and I will continue to edit it in Google. And if my students click on that, they will view it in Google and they will be able to collaborate in Google. And as you can see, it says there students assign this task and edit the document. So I know at a glance that I've created a collaboration. It's something that my students can edit. It's something they can contribute to. Okay? It's not static. They can go in and they can change it. And of course, earlier in the presentation, we spoke about giving permissions. I can choose which of the um, 
students normally it's the whole class but I can you know divide it down into the groups I've created or whatever and say who has access to it so it uses that same sort of information system by default we assume everybody in the class uh, wants to contribute but you can choose to sort of narrow that down to maybe just one group of, of students so what we've done is we've created that in the cloud I've not had to worry too much about permissions and things like that because those have been set for me on on the class level and then I can drill down and change them so that's one way that's getting collaboration working and then the, when the students click on that they can edit it and they can work on it um, as if it was their own document one of the other things that we want to introduce and this is one of the things that's been called for by the more advanced users of cloud documents is being able to not upload a cloud document from either Office or G Suite, but actually keep a live link to it. And really what, what that means is that if I up if I let students have access to it, they have read-only access to it, they can't edit, they can't contribute, but I can continue up to update it. So if I update it in the background, then students, when they go back in, they will see my refreshed version. And to do that, we have our new um, file control that you'll be seeing all across its learning. Um, it's really simple. I can drag and drop files from my device. That's great. Or when I click on it, it will give me choices. And these choices we've sort of grouped into three areas. The area that um, we start with is I want to upload from a device. I want to upload from Google. Basically, I want to put a copy into its learning. Okay. So that's going to actually take it from wherever it is on your computer or wherever and put that copy into its learning. But also, you might want to create a link to it. Okay. And what we're doing here is we're not putting a copy of that document in. We're putting a link to it. You can continue to work on it, but everybody else can only view it. Okay. And it'll work with Google. It will work with Office 365. And you'll also see something called Your Files. That's basically a place where I got a list of all of my files. That's something that's coming later in the year. Uh, but we just wanted to show the sort of, you know, the full screens now. And if you remember back to earlier in the presentation, if I want to, I can create a Word document or PowerPoint document or an Excel document directly um, in its learning without needing a cloud system. Okay. So we've got these choices I can upload from, I can link to, or I can create. And if I was to link to a Google document, again, it would open up my Google in the cloud. I pick the file that I want, I select it, and then it adds it into the task. And here we can see it's a linked file. So again, at a glance, I can see what's a collaboration. It says students can edit this or it says it's a linked file. And again, if I click on this, it won't download it and like that. It'll open it in the cloud. I can work on it. And when my students click on it, same for them. They'll see the linked live version. They'll be able to um, you know, use that and, and, and see that. And then I'll be able to make changes to it. And then, of course, I can do the traditional thing, which we're all used to doing, which is I can upload from my computer or wherever. I can pick it and I can add it. And when this gets added in, as you can see, it doesn't say linked. It doesn't say students can edit it. It's just a file. And then that will be handled in, in the way that files are. And of course, this was a Word document I picked, but that could be any um, uh, file, any of the files that you know we allow. So we're still allowing you to upload files from your computer and so on. But we're just introducing the concept of files that are linked to the cloud and files that are linked and collaborated on in the cloud. Of course, if I think oh, I've got too many files now in this in this task, there's too many things in place. Um, there's a little X that sits across all of these. <coughs> and what I can do is I can get rid of my um, file by clicking on that. And of course, it'll say you sure that won't delete the file on Google. It will stay on Google, but it's no longer part of this task. It's no longer something that then, then the students will see within this this task. OK, so it's keeping the cloud files within the cloud. And if you want to, you can copy them into its learning. That's fine. OK, but we want people to be using the cloud in the way it's designed to. And uh, they'll stay off in the cloud until until I call them into the task. So when I save this, um, it'll then give me a nice summary because I've done different things. Uh, so I can. Um, and when students then go in and view it, so a student will be able to see the files. A student will know its homework. And if a student completes it and says they've completed it, I can start to see who's completed the task. So the students view, OK, will have the files and one of them's a collaboration and one of them's there for me to download. 
um, I've got those and I can I can work on them and it's put it into my task list so I can see it's a task and it's there to be completed and then when the students have completed it they can say I'm done and then the teacher will know they've finished and the teacher can see who's completed the task and who hasn't completed the task so what we're trying to do is bring all of those great collaborative cloud tools and just drop them into its learnings workflow so as a teacher I've not needed to be too concerned about uh, where my files are I know at a glance if they're collaborations or they're linked so I know the context of the students are using them and the students know the context as well they know whether it's just to view they know whether it's collaboration and I can give them all the help and support I need when I'm actually creating the task hi my name is Bart van Kemenade and I'm a product owner at its learning in this video I would like to talk to you about our new assignment tool the new assignment tool has the following highlights it has a modern look and feel created assignments can be shared with other teachers in the its learning library it's better suited for mobile devices and it has built-in functionality for online annotation of submitted documents let me show you how you can create a new assignment if you are using new its learning there is an add button to the right of the course menu from which you can quickly create an assignment but I can also still create an assignment from the tree menu the page to create a new assignment has a clear separation of content on the left and settings on the right let me quickly enter a title and paste in a description and let me also enter some settings such as a deadline if you have calendar events the dates with events have a green background I will also choose that I want to assess this assignment with score and then I click create assignment students can now start submitting you might wonder what about the assignments I have created before they will still be there but when you copy an old assignment to the same or another course the content and settings will end up in the new assignment tool after you have created your first assignment with the new tool or you open an assignment you have copied you are offered to take a tour of the biggest changes this includes how you can view or edit the assignment description how to set or change settings and how you can send reminders if you haven't seen it before for other content that can be shared in the library you are also made aware that the new assignment tool can be shared in the its learning library I will talk more about that in a bit after the assignment is created the page focuses on the next step the progress of the students that need to submit this assignment but you can still open the assignment details or edit the assignment description if needed on the right you can quickly view the different settings such as the deadline and with a simple click you can change it and if for example you want to make clear to your students that they need to work on this assignment in their own time you can quickly mark the assignment as homework one of the biggest changes of the new assignment tool is that assignments can now be shared in the its learning library if you have created an engaging assignment your students love why not share it with others and if other teachers do this as well you can find and reuse the assignments they've created and shared let me show you how you can share an assignment click the add to library button and choose add and publish you are asked to put in a description and at least one keyword this helps other teachers to quickly see what this assignment is about you can also choose which teachers can find this assignment perhaps you want to limit this to your school district or municipality you can add more information about this assignment for example for which grades or age levels it is suited but I will fast forward and publish it other teachers can now find it let me show you how I'm on the add page of my course and I choose content from library in the window that opens you can enter what you're looking for I want to see what is available for writing and in this example I'm looking for an assignment so I filter the results to show only assignments now I find the assignment I have just shared when I click on it I can view the assignment itself to see what it looks like but since we just saw that I just click add to course 
Let's now open it in my course to see how it ended up. I have already reviewed this resource in the past, but otherwise I could write a new one and share my thoughts. When assignments are shared, you only share its description, possible attachments and or rubrics. You do not share the settings of the assignment. How and when other teachers want to work with it is up to them. So for this assignment I've just added, I can set a deadline, decide if this assignment is homework, remove or add learning objectives, etc. Now let's see the student's perspective on this assignment. Peter Bloom has installed the It's Learning app on his smartphone. With this app, students can not only see what they need to do, but they can also get notified when they get feedback or when the assignment is assessed. On the app's homepage, Peter can see what has recently been added to his courses. When he clicks on Tasks, he can see all his open tasks and when they are due. By clicking on the task, he can read what he needs to do and could also answer the assignment from his mobile phone. But since for this assignment he needs to write a letter, Peter has chosen to do so in Google Docs on his laptop. When he's done writing, he goes to its learning and answers the assignment. To upload the Google Doc, he chooses to add a file from Google Drive. Then he selects the letter he wrote from his Google Drive and submits his answer. Now the student has submitted this assignment, let us see how the new assignment tool works from the teacher's perspective again. With my teacher account, I see that Peter has submitted an answer. The first time a teacher opens an answer with attachments, he or she is notified that it is now possible to directly make comments on attached files. By clicking on the title of an attachment, the document is opened in the browser. Let me show you how to add comments. Simply select the text you want to comment on and click the comment icon. Enter the comment you want to give and click add. Added comments can be edited or deleted by clicking on them. When done with my comments, I can close the document viewer. Then I can decide if the student is done or that he perhaps needs to resubmit. Like in the old assignment tool, I can still assess with a grade or rubric and enter overall feedback. Instead of the default document viewer, it is also possible to view and comment using Office Online. For this, system administrators can enable Office Online under the global settings of their site. Let me show you what this changes in the assignment. Office Online allows you to work together with the student on the same document. After you've given feedback, the student can pick up where the teacher left. As a statement of record, a snapshot of the last submitted document can also be viewed. To comment on the document, the teacher can simply click on the title. Word Online opens, and if desired, I can make corrections directly in this document. It is also possible to comment using the review functionality of Office Online. Thank you for watching this video. If there are other improvements to the new assignment tool you would like to see, please share them with us on ideas.itslearning.com. There will be some changes. The first one um, allows you to put the gradebook directly in the course menu. And a bit of context around this over the last almost year, we've worked a lot to get integration with student information systems up and running, uh, also including grade pass back. Uh, we did research, and research showed that there were two reasons why the gradebook wasn't used a lot. One of them was more the, the lack of ease of use, was a bit clunky to use, but the other one was the lack of great pass back in the gradebook. Um, and we've done a lot about, about that, making it much easier to use, uh, visually attractive, but also um, have great pass back in place now for some of the major SIS systems. Uh, and with that in place, it is much a feature much more uh, useful and also much more important to teachers. So we want to give it a more prominent place in the course menu. 
Some other more visual changes to the gray book, about columns in the gray book. If you have a lot of columns, it just broke out of the screen, out of the white box, um, which looked a bit ugly, to be honest. So what we've done now is we added a scroll bar, which you can see here at the bottom, that allows you to scroll to the columns that uh, fall out of the screen. But nothing runs out of this white box. And also to make sure everything feels a bit uh, in one style, we've updated the pagination control with which you can browse to the next pages of students. If So we've got a really powerful data warehouse. It has, you know, all of the site stats and usage stats and so on in it, all the learning objectives. And we've now extended it to also contain all of the grade data. OK, so this means that, you know, districts and communities and so on can get all of that grade information from our data warehouse using the OData standard and they can then bring it into their own um, uh, sort of data warehouse tool. We've also improved all of the data that's available through advanced reporting as well. So the grade model also includes course elements and assignments and it's, it's a much more rounded solution.